right, we're going to be looking at some of the basics of Linux here. And this is really just to get you started, um, get you prepared, give you some prep work to do in Linux to get you ramped up for the ethical hacking or any of our uh, technical security classes for that matter. So once you've uh, followed the setup instructions and you actually have um, Kali installed, you're going to immediately go to this icon, which is the terminal icon, and you click it and it brings up a terminal. So I'm going to close this one out and just start over and click that and it brings up a terminal here. And this is where we're going to do most of our work from. Now I'm going to maximize this window and make my text just a little bit bigger so you can see clearly what I'm typing here. Right? So one of the most basic and fundamental things when it comes to um, Linux is knowing where you are and what's in the current directory that you're in. And to find out what your current directory is, it's just PWD, which is short for print working directory. And as you can see, by default there, we're actually in the root directory. All right. Now, keep in mind, this is the home profile or the home directory of the root account. It's not the same as being at the root of the drive. For example, if I did a CD slash, that actually takes me to the root of the drive. And if we look at um, what's in there, when we do PWD this time, it just shows us a slash. Now, also, if I do LS, you can see there's lots of other subdirectories inside this directory. On the other hand, if I go back to where we were, root, you can see there's different files. These are files I've created and things like that. So as you're looking through your directory, you'll, you'll be able to see the difference there. So another thing I introduced was just the ls command. Uh, you saw me quickly do that, and it's simply ls, and it shows you the contents of your directory. Now, if I did the command ls-a, it shows me all files, including hidden files. And one thing in Linux you'll note is anytime you see a file that begins with a dot, it means it's a hidden file. Okay. Now, if I added an L to that, so if I did LA instead of just A, that stands for, the L stands for long file format. So we're saying to give us the long file format and show us all files. And long format includes extensions um, and everything else as related to the file. And we can see that. We see all the attributes, permissions, uh, things like that show up as well when we do the dash LA. All right. So that's the basics of looking around and f first of all, figuring out what your current directory is and then looking to see what's in that current directory. Now, also, it becomes important for us to look at running processes, and we can do that by issuing the ps-a command there, and that shows us what our running processes are. Okay. Now, another thing I want to introduce at this point is grep. You will use this throughout the course. Um, grep is a way for you to basically filter on output, and typically we use grep by piping output from one command uh, to grep as input. And the way that we do that, for example, Let's create a uh, list here. So if I did ls-la, that shows me all the files in this directory. Now, if I wanted to see just hidden files, if I did ls-la and then did a pipe and said grep dot, okay, and what that means is we're simply saying list everything and then take whatever the results of that command is, pipe it, to grep and grep for just a string dot. So let's see what happens if we do that. Um, what we see is we see every file that's got a dot in it. All right. Now, on the other hand, we can see there are several files that I've created um, in here that has the word um, DNS in it. So if I did a grep for DNS, that list everything and then grep for DNS, then we only see the files that have the string DNS in it. 
right? Now that's part of how uh, we can utilize grep for lots of different things. Furthermore, I'm going to start up the Ice Weasel web browser here, all right? And I'm going to minimize that. Now, when we do ps-a again to look at running processes, remember that shows us all running processes. I could also grep for just Ice Weasel, which is the web browser we just started up here. So if I were to say ps-a, pipe that to grep, and I'm simply going to grep for Ice Weasel, like so. And instead of seeing all processes, I just see the Ice Weasel process. All right? And introducing another command here, stopping processes in Linux, we typically use the kill command or the kill all command. Now there's two ways I could kill it. I could just do kill dash nine and specify the PID for Ice Weasel, which in this case is 14020. And as we can see, Ice Weasel is running down here, but when I issue this kill command, you see Ice Weasel down here has now gone away. All right. We could also kill by process, so if I start Ice Weasel again and minimize it, I could do kill all dash V and specify Ice Weasel. And you see Ice Weasel go away again as a result of that. So there are several different ways to go about killing uh, processes and, and uh, you know, how to manipulate things in Linux. But that's one way to, a couple of ways to actually do that. Another command that you'll utilize quite a bit is the cat command. We typically use it. Uh, it's short for concatenation. Now, first off, we're going to use it here to create a file. So I'm just going to create a file named Keytron. And you can do this to create a file that's your own name. Um, actually, I'll create something called demo Linux. And you can just use your name as your file name. So when we use cat and use the is greater than symbol, it puts us in interactive cat mode, so we're creating a file named Demo Linux, and it's going to put us in interactive mode, which means we're able to modify or add to that file. So if I hit enter on that, I'm going to type a line, enter and type another line, and then enter and then Control D is how you break out of that. All right? That is again is Control D that breaks us out. So now if we just read this file with the cat command without the is greater than, you can see the results is basically what we typed into the file up here. If I wanted to add a line to that, or add another line, I could use two as greater than, and this universally means append. Hit enter, and then I control D again to close out. Now if we cat demo Linux, we see that the third line is also added to this file as well. All right. Now, what if I said cat this file and, and grep out just a line or lines that have the word Keytron? So we could do that by saying cat the file name, sending it to grep via pipe, and I'm going to grep for the string Keytron. And it shows those two lines. Now, one thing I need to point out here is Linux is extremely case sensitive. So if I were to repeat that command, and I grep for Keytron with all lowercase, what you get back is nothing. And that is because of the case sensitivity of Linux. So what I would literally have to do is either A, make sure I match case, or with the grep command, I'm just going to up arrow to repeat that, I could pass a dash I flag, which essentially says ignore case. And as you can see, we still see the lines that we were looking for. Uh, in this instance. All right. So that's some of the basics of getting around uh, on the command line. Some of the things that you'll utilize 
as you go through uh, this course. Now, um, moving right along, let's take a look at some of the basic networking stuff. Um, first off, one of the first things you're going to want to check is to find out what your current IP address is. And we do that by simply typing the command ifconfig. And it shows us what our current IP address is. Now, in my case, it's this. If you have a fresh install of Kali, you might not even have an IP address yet. And speaking of that, the very next thing that I want to show you is how to get one. Once you start up Kali, it might not do a DHCP discover by default, but to force that, you want to just enter the command DH client and go ahead and hit enter on that. Now what you'll see is as a result of you doing that, um, if you enter ifconfig when it finishes, you should see that you've now come back and gotten yourself an IP address. Now as you go through the course and the instructor uh, asks you to switch your network configuration in VMware from NAT to bridged or vice versa, then what you will find out is you will need to go and do this DH client command to get Linux to go out and get a new IP address based on you switching to a new network. Um, and that's one of the things that challenges uh, people as we go through the course. All right, so a couple of other uh, important things to note here. What I want you to do is do this with me. We're going to create a directory using the make dir command. And I want you to name that directory infosec institute tools and files. And I want you to case it exactly like I have. Capital I in infosec, capital I in institute, capital T in the tools, and a capital F for files. So go ahead and make that directory. Now, do me a favor, we're going to change that directory, and to do that we use the cd command, just like in DOS. But instead of typing this all the way out, like so, go ahead and just type info with a capital I, or INFOS, sorry, and then from that point just hit your tab key. And if you notice, tab auto-completed the rest of it for you without you having to actually spell it out. Now that is an important skill to master because it's going to make the difference in how fast or how slow you go about completing your labs. Autocomplete is the key to navigating the file system even when you don't know where things are. For example, let's say I wanted to go into a file that began with DN but I don't know the name. So I could read that file with cat and just do DN and hit the tab key and hitting the tab key a couple of times gets Linux to show me every possibility or every file that I could possibly possibly be trying to communicate with. So now I see there's several options. Well maybe the one I want to look at is DNS demo. So now I could complete that or start finishing it. Just do demo and hit tab again and it auto completes the SH part for me. All right. So tab completion is your friend it's going to be one of the in most important parts of getting through these labs without having any issue um, as far as getting through them pretty quickly another thing that also happens is I, I'm, a, I'm the king of typos so what I've learned is using tab takes out the human element of committing typos lots of times so that's another good reason to utilize tab instead of actually trying to type these long paths and these long file names all the way out completely Right. So those are some basic little things that you need to know going into the ethical hacking course. Right. So a couple of other uh, things that we want to point out is basically looking back at some of the things you've typed. You can always type the history command, and this is in just about any Linux distro and hit enter and it shows you the history of everything you've typed in this since you started this VM or in this session, terminal session. When you're done with the course you can literally go back and do history and see everything you've typed throughout the course. Now if I wanted to run a specific man again, command again, for example if I wanted to run cat demo Linux, I could do that with an exclamation and then that command number, in this case 
1014 and it repeats cat demo Linux it repeats that command so a few little shortcuts there now what I recommend you do is literally go through each of these commands 10 times until you get it until you you understand it and you kind of commit it to memory because these are some of the key commands that are going to be important to you going through uh, the rest of the course now there's a second part to this video that I'm gonna have you look at as well where we get into some more advanced Linux command line stuff and it just walks you through um, adding on to what you just learned here just to give you a little bit more leg up and a little bit more advanced skill set to come into the class with uh, thanks for watching this video I'm certain it'll help you out uh, when you to get over those Linux bugs those of you that are new to Linux when you start the first day of ethical hacking um, look forward to seeing you in the class